Some of you might be here for my film reviews channel. Dad, I had a nightmare and it would make me feel a lot better if you breathed every word you spoke. Come here, buddy. And others might be here for my music channel. You said I could be anything. And some of you might even be here from my Let's Play channel. Uh. What I did back there was, uh, that gun has a secondary function of a Eat my period. A proximity mine which explodes when people get close to it. Eat my period. So... Wait, get over here. No, come on. Please, you want to get a good angle. No, just... oh my god, get a bit closer? Perfect. Now stand a bit to the right. No, a bit to the left. Now a bit further back. Oh! <laughs> So if you're not subscribed to one of them, fucking subscribe, because I do this shit, and so do it. Hey Adam, would you rather be an octopus with two limbs, or a human with eight limbs, uh, and why? Probably a human with eight limbs, assuming... I, like, what we would... <laughs> Probably a human with eight limbs. Uh, because that would be really fucking kinky, and probably really fun in bed. When you were a kid, um, uh, when did you become an atheist, and, um, what was the process, and, uh, like, did your parents, um, not approve of it? How did it, how did it all happen? When I was really young, I, uh, was religious because I was brought up, uh, Lutheran, Christian, and went to like Bible camps and all that stuff, but mostly just because of my parents. Um, my The way that I prayed was sort of in a way that uh, most religious people do, is they think of something that's going to happen anyway, and then uh, they pray for it, and then afterwards they go, oh, it worked. So my version of doing that was, since I was so uh, paranoid and, um, I don't know, I... I I, when I was really young, I, w I kept being like, oh my god, what if there's, like, a robber murderer in the house that wants to come kill us? And all those ideas were just perpetuated by the fact that, like, my mom's pretty paranoid, so I kind of grew up that way. And, um, so I would, at night, I would be like, please, God, let there not be a murderer slash robber in the house that wants to kill me. <laughs> Make sure that no one's in this house that's not supposed to be. And, uh, sure enough, uh, A, there would never be any robber murderers, and B, uh, I felt comforted knowing that I could basically just communicate this small amount of dialogue either within my head or just whispering to myself, and I would feel comforted by that. Eventually, I decided, um, that I would try doing it without putting the whole idea of God in there. You know, like pray to your pillow or just convince yourself that there that bad things aren't going to happen. And I found that I had the exact same effect. That A, the things that were unlikely to happen didn't happen. And B, I felt comforted when I heard it coming from someone, even if it's from myself. My parents, um, they know that I'm non-religious. I never really came out to them as such, but... Um, I, I don't really ask them about their religion, and I, I don't know how much of it now at this point is just, uh, sort of like a traditional thing. We stopped saying, like, grace, like, a long time ago. Um, but I, they're not, like, crazy religious or anything like that. And the age where I would first consider myself being an atheist would probably be 15. Who is your favorite wrestler? What is your favorite wrestling pay-per-view? And what was your favorite wrestling feud? Do I look like I watch wrestling? Hey Adam, I just want to know, what's your opinion on teenage smoking or teenage drug use? My opinion on teenage smoking is that it's fucking dumb and that you probably shouldn't do it because if you don't do it, then you'll, you're you're going to wind up not addicted, and if you do it, then you're going to wind up addicted. And even though anybody, everybody at age 15 is just on a quest to find smokes and get smokes and smoke, then it turns out that as soon as you're like 22, then you're just gonna be doing everything you can to quit. And uh, same with all your fucking friends who are smoking, they're just gonna be thinking of ways to quit and no one's gonna really think of it as cool anymore and you're gonna be fucked.
so I don't smoke. Uh, doing drugs, however, I have a different opinion on it. Um, because I think, I, like, drug use isn't a good thing uh, uh, over an extended period of time, but for someone to try out drugs is, I would say, a very, very um, mentally healthy thing to do because it gives you a perspective, especially hallucinogenics like mushrooms. Um, it's not rewiring your brain in the same way that it would be like a lobotomy, but it's offering you the opportunity to be convinced of something or or at least tricked uh, knowingly into something being your reality and then when you're coming down off of it uh, you start to piece together what is reality and what isn't and then you start to question the reality that you're in and then you start thinking of things differently of okay so should I be taking everything I hear for granted? Should I be listening to everything I hear from every person? Should I trust everything I hear on the television? Um, sort of things like that. And uh, I don't know. Anything that offers perspective is a good thing. I would only um, recommend more softcore drugs, uh, shrooms, MDMA, stuff like that. Um, saliva, funny. Um, but stay away from crack cocaine. Stay away from heroin. Um... Stay away from uh, crystal meth. Those things uh, can be damaging for you in the exact same way that I was talking about with uh, cigarettes. Because they're addicting as fuck. And really hard to quit. Um, otherwise, just be careful. And uh, if you're going to be doing drugs, the, when you're young is the time to do them. Because uh, once you start paying bills, then it kind of just becomes like a sad thing. And it's like, okay, if you want to be productive, then you can't be high at the same time. So um, it, you're either going to take away from your productivity and your money. Or you're going to fuck things up. And I, I don't know. It, it's, it's more of a convenient time to do it when you're like 15. And you've got nothing better to do and you don't really care about anything. Um... As long as they don't affect your grades or whatever, if you care about school, uh, make sure you have the right information. Make sure that you're not mixing uh, the wrong things. Don't mix, like, nitrates with Viagra or don't mix, um, make sure that, like, every single thing that you're thinking of taking, you do thorough research on because there's a lot of misinformation out there and, um... Like, even, even just the common, like, make sure you drink plenty of water if you're taking MDMA. We all know that to be a common thing. Well, you actually, um, you, your body actually stores more water when you're on MDMA, uh, or it retains more, so you can actually die from drinking too much water on MDMA, so you have to find a happy medium with that. Make sure you don't get dehydrated, etc., etc. You gotta do it safe, or else you're being fucking dumb. And don't make the ever-so-common mistake of taking something and then being like, it's not, it hasn't kicked in yet, and then just taking more of it, because you're going to wind up fucked, and I was on the couch for like eight hours and couldn't even move, and I'm surprised I didn't die. And what are your musical non-famous inspirations? Like, what insp what people around you inspired you to, be, to get into music? My parents put me into music shit at a young age, so it became more of a knack for me. It, it, it's really natural for me to just, like, pick up an instrument and I can learn it in, like, five minutes, unless it's something with a reed or something that I need to, like, position my mouth in a certain way to be able to play it. But notation-wise, it's super easy for me just because I did start at a young age, so I have to thank my parents for that. Um, uh, my, my brother's band was the first band that I was in, um, and then they kicked me out. And then that other band that I was in with that bitch that I wrote a few songs about, um, uh, she, she served as some sort of inspiration for me because she really brought forth the idea of, of okay, we're going gung-ho. If we want to be able to do it, we got to put our best effort into it. And so that got me practicing and, you know, I was able to um, sort of tell them which parts to play and, and uh, write their pieces, and that sort of got me able to teach myself their instruments and then teach myself other instruments, and now I can play all the fucking instruments I want. And so since um, 
since they decided to fucking be bitches and fucking ditch, I decided that I would record something that wouldn't be possible with them. So I recorded my demo, and it's much better than anything that I could have ever done with them. So fuck them. I got a great question that I saw posted on Reddit the other day. It's, if you had to choose between the two, would you rather sleep with your girlfriend in your mom's body or your mom in your girlfriend's body? Oh, I see you're from Reddit. How's that uh, chemotherapy treating you? Uh, I'd probably have a threesome with uh, both of them. Hey, Adam. A couple questions. First, about your hair. How long have you had long hair? And um, why do you keep it? What, what do you like about it? As another guy with long hair, I get asked these questions a lot too, and I'm curious what your answers are. I have long hair because I feel it defines myself, and I look in the mirror and I go like, that's me, and if I had short hair, I, I wouldn't feel that way, and maybe in the future I will feel that way, but I have hair right now, and I'm not going to have hair my whole life, so I'm going to fucking ride it out while I can, because I don't even think my hairline's receding. I think I'm doing pretty fucking good. So, uh, yeah, with hair like this, why would I not want to have fucking super long hair? Plus... It's like my fucking mane, and since I'm a huge fucking pervert, somebody can just like tug on it while they're fucking me, and it gets me off. If you uh, if you look at your videos, like from when you first started making them to uh, now, you can see kind of a transition from you know being a late high schooler to someone who's out on their own. So I'm curious, what in that time uh, do you think is the biggest change in your outlook on life, and uh, what do you think caused that change? First of all, thanks for checking out my older videos, even if they only exist to show how much better I've gotten at making videos. Um, it's cool to see that someone has seen, like, a, a, a chronicle of my life and has witnessed all these changes, even though you probably don't really know me. My biggest change on my outlook in life has been to not trust other people, and if I need to get something done, I have to do it myself. And if you try to put faith in other people, if someone's supposed to do something for you, whether or not you're paying them for it, whether or not they're your friend, whether or not they fucking convince you and tell you with a straight face that that's everything they want and that they'll put the utmost effort into it, they don't give a shit, and you have to do everything yourself or else you're not going to get it done don't trust other people. The way I got that way is how do you fucking think? I get pissed off. And what part of furryism do you think uh, attracts you to it? Specifically that uh, you find special about furries that uh, that you can't find in, uh, in other areas, I guess, of pornography or interests. Thanks. That's a weird question because first of all, nobody chooses their sexual or sexuality and no one chooses their desires, whether or not it be sexual or lifestyle choices. So even if you're looking at it from a perspective of just like, I like to dress up in animal costumes and it's non-sexual whatsoever, because believe it or not, those people exist. Um, even from that perspective, you don't really come to that perspective from a, a standpoint of coming to a conclusion. You, you don't, you don't like build up thinking like, this is logical and so I'll do it. Same reason... You know, why do some people like skydiving? Why do some people like eh, blah, 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 blah? Nobody chooses what they like. Why do some people like hookah? Why do some people, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so basically every human being on the planet starts, uh, they, they look at what they already like and then they justify it from that point. And if it's something that makes sense after they justify it, then they accuse other people of... Uh, having interests that are unjustifiable because they go, well, that doesn't make sense and mine makes sense. So the only reason I like what I like is because it makes sense and not the other way around. And I'm not just going in one circle of my logic. So what attracts me to it is the fact that it's fucking half animal, half human hybrids that um, I want to have sex with. And something went wrong in my brain where I feel that I identify with uh, half animal, half people more than I do my own species. What I appreciate about it though is that I could literally go anywhere in the world that has an internet connection and find a place to crash just because I'm a fur fag. Um, very accepting and lovable community even if, um, you know, there are a lot of annoying people and you have, you, if you're tolerant towards, um, you know, people of uh, different wavelengths, uh, then then it's really easy. But it all depends on who you hang out with, too. And it all depends on the city. It all depends on how large the community is. And I know fucking furries that aren't even really... Like, th th there's nothing sexual in it for them whatsoever. They just do it for fun uh, because there's fun people involved. And 
uh, the people that uh, I hang out with are super chillax and um, very non-judgmental, which is a good thing. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I feel like um, when I dislocated my knee and suddenly it was like the most loving and caring and and uh, amazing people that wanted to help me out of that situation, uh, I, I'm much better off doing it there than if I was at you know, some random concert, and, um, everybody just wanted to help out, and, um, if I could be a non-furry, I don't know if I would, because I like this community too much, and although I might have had a, a lot of different, uh, opinions on that beforehand, um, I'm at the point in my life where I will defend my, uh, furry brethren, um, even if I'm not defending them completely, because what I see on the internet is a lot of fucking troll bait, and, uh, that seems to be more often than not. And remember, it's the loudest voice that gets heard. It's the same analogy when you think about, um, like, a super flamboyant gay person, and then you're like, well, everybody who's gay has to be flamboyant because the only gay people I've seen have been the flamboyant ones, but however, you've actually seen a million uh, non-flamboyant gay people, but you've never associated them to be gay because you've just assumed that they're straight. You get it? You get it? Hey, you planning on doing a Michael Bay review kind of like the same way you did the M. Night Shyamalan review? I get that question a lot, and my answer is maybe, I don't know, because I'd like to, I, I think that it would still fill up like a, an entire like fucking at least 20 minutes of just on like transformers 2 you know it would be a huge fucking video and the reason why i did m night was because it was to illustrate the downward slope of going i started out so high and oh no shit 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 it's getting worse um whereas michael bay is just he's been hovering at the bottom the whole time he hasn't he's he's just touching the ground he was never up high to begin with so i don't know um we'll see I, if there's anything I'd like to review, it would be Transformers 2 from him because that was really funny. First question is, um, after watching your Dark Ocean Adam account, uh, I really like seeing you act in front of the camera and I think it's really funny you with your friends making these short dumb films and everything and some of them serious, some of them a lot more goofy. But I was wondering if you'd ever actually get back into that. I know it's a little harder being out of high school, working a job, doing the reviews and everything to take time to sit down and make a short film, anything. But I'm wondering if you will ever get back into that, even just slightly. You must mean my Dark Ocean Films channel. Um, when I look back at those and I watch them, yeah, some of them are funny. And some of them you can kind of say like, oh, for a 15-year-old, that was fucking amazing. I don't know any other 15-year-old that made something that good. But it's not, like, good anyway, you know? It's not to the level of quality that I want. And although most people would just be deleting their entire YouTube account altogether, I'm the type of person where if there's something that I did in the past, I won't necessarily stand by it but I won't ignore that it happened. So uh, check out this channel that's not that great, that um, a bunch of stuff that I thought was funny. And um, I'd like to get back into stuff like that. I would like to write a film. I would like to direct a film, but my ambitions um, are, are not achievable with my current status of A, time, B, money, three see resources stuff like that so if um if ever i ran into a bunch of money and free time then i'll do something but other than that i really don't want to take the cheap skate route of just making a bunch of like comedy sketch videos and shit that's like retarded easy meanwhile i just created my let's play channel but um who knows we'll see what happens if you could be involved with any project, um, film-wise, uh, working with uh, your favorite director as an actor, or uh, actor, um, being next to one of your favorite actors on screen, maybe even behind the screen, if you ever wanted to direct or make your own movie, what would the ideal movie be for you? So basically the general question is, what would you like to work on, what would you like to create as well or be a part of i would like to make something that's like so brutal and gory and realistic that people want to throw up and people think it's real i would like to make like a legit furry movie maybe cg or something like that where instead of it being just a child oriented thing it could be more adult in tone and that doesn't necessarily mean sex scenes but that does mean something actually worth watching 
something that's not that doesn't have to be marketed to children something with like emotional depth and intelligence that would be cool um i would like to direct the film and you know get um i don't know fucking make something cool i want to make something cool i want to make something good i want to um hire jeremy irons and uh make him the voice of scar and steal the rights from disney and um, make it extremely adult, and the entire thing will be one giant sex scene, and I'll be in it, and um, I'll pretend that it's a kid's movie in the advertisements, and then when parents get into the theaters, they go, oh, rated R, that must be a mistake. Then when that movie actually starts, all those kids will be scarred for life, get it, scar, and I'll have a boner. What can, what can, what conditioner do you use? The question everybody's been dying to know, what conditioner do I use? I use ISO. I don't even, um, I get it from my friend who's a hairstylist. And, uh, I haven't been using that forever. That's, that's the, like, second bottle I've used. Before that, I was using, like, hemp conditioner. Before that, I was just using, like, random, like, Tresemme shit for Tresem. Um, before that, it doesn't even fucking matter, okay? You don't get tricked into the idea that, uh, you can buy a shampoo or conditioner that will change your hair to these lovely fucking locks, Okay? You gotta be born with it. It's your genetics. And I'm sorry, um, I didn't ask for this, but <laughs> too bad. And um, just don't waste your money on stupid shit thinking you'll get better hair because of it. You can treat your hair right, but honestly, I don't even give a shit. A lot of the days I don't shower, I, I can use like fucking head and shoulders, it'll look the exact same. And um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I just got good hair, and I'm sorry that I have to console the rest of the world uh, uh, of their uh, fucking curly mess that they have on their head. I'm sorry. And and have you seen Fight Club? Uh, is it good? Because I haven't seen it yet. Because you give me a, uh, a 10 star rating over Fight Club because I want to know if that's a good movie or not and if I should see that movie. Okay, thanks. Bye, Adam. Fight Club is a 7 out of 10. Oh my god, how could you not rate it at least 9.5? Fight Club has to be the best movie ever made, Adam. Why would you rate it a 7? Why would I rate it a 7? I don't know, because I like it, but it's not amazing. And um, maybe you might find it amazing, but I don't, and it's my personal preference. And as soon as I assign a number to something, then people flip the fuck out. So I'm, I'm considering abandoning using numbers altogether, because people will ignore the entire thing that I say in a quickie. The first, like, 1 to six minutes of me talking and describing what I liked and what I didn't like or what I would like or how, how whether or not I recommend it and people just ignore that fucking part and then go like oh you gave this a six and this a seven and this a five that means this was better than this and this and this and this and that you think that overall blah 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 and I'm it, it's so fucking dumb and Fight Club is all right and it's good but I don't go batshit over it because it seems to be everybody's favorite fucking movie and everybody goes fucking crazy over David Fincher. Everybody had Social Network on their top 10 of 2010. It's all great. It's all great, but it's not amazing. Stay tuned for this epic fucking not probably not conclusion because I still got fucking like 180 comments to read in part two.